Welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Van Johnson and George Murphy in Battleground. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Ten years ago, there was a battle being fought. Tonight, we honor that momentous battle of Baston with Metro Goldwyn Mayer's great tribute to the foot soldier of World War II, Battleground. And from the original cast, our stars are Van Johnson and George Murphy. Now, act one of Battleground, starring Van Johnson as Holly and George Murphy as Jarvis. This is a story about a squad of men, the second squad of the third platoon of I Company of the 101st Airborne Division. It's November 1944. We're in a rest camp in France after 63 days on the line in Holland. Couldn't ask for a better deal. Even Kinney, our platoon sergeant, is feeling his oats. Horsing around with the rest of us out there on the troop. Hot, ho, hurry, ho, hot, ho, hurry, ho. I signed you up for the length of the war. I never had so good before. I bet you'll get in a bit of a now and most of the squad's just killing time waiting for tomorrow. Tomorrow is a big day. Three-day pass to Paris. Stanford, Abner, and Wallowitz are playing cards. That fella hanging up his socks is Rodriguez. Next to him, the one with the glasses, that's Hanson. Hanson's writing a letter home to his wife. That's her picture there on his bunk. His wife and his kid. Next to Hanson is Kip, brushing his teeth. Ah, those gleaming white false teeth. And then there's Leighton. He just walked in, a brand new replacement. Sergeant Kenny? Yeah. My name's Leighton. I've been assigned to your platoon. Oh, uh, well, you'll be in the second squad then. Make yourself at home. But uh, on some other sack, huh? That one's mine. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I didn't know. Um, Sergeant, yeah. there's a replacement I came in with. A fellow named Hooper? We've been together ever since we got in the Army. Oh, they split you up, huh? Yeah, he's in K Company. Um, I was wondering if there was anything you could do to get him over here. Well, I tell you, I'm a little outranked, pal. You see, there's a major general in every outfit. It's his job to find out who your buddy is and then split you up. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. Abner, will you stop saying that, will you please? Hey, fellas, look what I found. Hi, I heard the war was on its last leg, so I thought I'd better come back. That Harley gets a rough deal, huh? Little scratch on his leg, and a month later he comes back in time for a three-day pass to Paris. Ah, uh, it was misery in that hospital, Rodriguez. Passes every night, champagne, l'amour, oh, <laughs> l'amour, l'amour, oh, and me brooding all the time about my dear old buddies back there defending the republic. <laughs> guys get sick, guys get wounded, and nothing ever happens to me, nothing. Except that time when you broke them false teeth. Ah. <laughs> It was when you was back, Holly. Kip finds out about some regulation. You can't keep a man on the line unless he's got at least six teeth of his own. I didn't know nothing about that regulation. So he busts his G.I. teeth with the butt of his rifle. I ran to a tree trunk in the dark. <laughs> anyway, he was off the line for two weeks getting a new set made. <laughs> well, which one of these cots is mine? You can have the sack next to me, Holly. Nobody's got it, have they? Huh? Oh, oh, oh no. I, I was just sitting here. Hey, Holly, come on. What's it like, Paris? Yeah. Well, of course, I spent all my spare time in the art galleries, Abner. 
But I happen to hear about a place that might interest you. Place Pigalle. Place Pigalle. Pig Alley. Be sure to bring your dog tags with you, though, because one night in Pig Alley, and you're going to think you're the caliph of Baghdad. Hey, Jarvis. How about you and me butting up in Paris, huh? What's the matter, Rodriguez? Did Pop play that Gersonia? Oh, Pop can't go. Kind of his arthritis. I love you, Rodriguez. I love all of you. But I'm getting me a private room and a private bath in Paris if I have to get it at the point of a gun. Uh, the big brain wants to get away from us common people. Hasn't got anybody around here to chat with about the Einstein theory. What do you mean? He's got me. And if I well, there ain't nothing we like to talk about me better. Ship me home, sound off for the air free. Hey, that's Pop now. Hiya, Pop. Well, holly, me boy. Bonjour, bonjour. What are you busting out about, Pop? No, it's nothing at all, son. Hardly worth mentioning. They're making me a civilian, that's all. They're what? Oh, I wish I had arthritis. It ain't the arthritis. They they got a report from the Red Cross that my wife's too sick to take care of the kids. So I let them talk me into accepting a dependency discharge. Oh, glad you made it, Pop. Well, who's going to adopt Rodriguez? He'll be lost without his popsy-wopsy. Kip, one of these days you're going to get a G.I. bootsy-wootsy right square in those G.I. teeth. <laughs> when do you leave, Pop? Any day now. I just got to sweat out a letter of confirmation from a higher headquarters. You going to miss me, Abner? That's for sure. That's for dang sure. Abner, will you please? I'm sorry, Jarvis. It keeps slipping out. How about dousing that light? Them Paris trucks will be leaving early. Yeah, go ahead. Turn it off. Uh, hey, you, that, that's my cot you're laying off. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. I'm a new replacement. I was just... <laughs> hey, uh, wallow it. What was that phone number in Paris? I told you a dozen times. Eight, twelve, quarante, deux, soixante, dix. Yeah. Who was that guy who said the ward be over by Christmas? What do you want? Egg in your beer? Here we are. Two hours from Paris. <laughs> So it goes. Small talk, then the slow, even breathing as we fall asleep. And the clicking of Kip's false teeth. I had a wonderful dream that night. Paris. A private room. A private bath. All right, roll out of them sacks. Oh, it better. Come on, roll out, you guys. What's the matter? Oh, Leave your sacks and grab your packs. Let's go, man. Come on. You're slow, man. Get him up, will you, Pop? Get him up yourself. I ain't going to Paris. Nobody's going to Paris. We're moving up. We're moving up? Where to, Kenny? It's me. All right, knock it off and roll out. The jury's made a breakthrough someplace. They tell me it's going to be cold, so wear your long johns and two pairs of pants. But yesterday they said we were off the line for good. Police order just come through. Well, it's trucks this time instead of gliders. That's a good sign anyway. This is one for the birds, brother. Strictly for the birds. General, I need a crack division to plug up that gap. A crack division, General? I'd be honored if you'd use the 101st. Awfully nice of you, old boy. Thanks a lot. Not at all, General. Not at all. Hey, Pop. Maybe the adjutant can put in a phone call about your discharge. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll probably send me home in a private plane. Oh, I forgot to tell you, man. <laughs> It's a secret move, so rip off your shoulder patches. All right, come on, saddle up, let's go. We rode all that day. Just about dark, we reached the village and the convoy halted. There seemed to be three or four roads coming together here. Some of the trucks started to deploy. On the street, a scattering of civilians stood watching. Jarvis, ask them where we are, will you? Hey, kill a little arm to save village. Well, what does he say? Where are we? Are you kidding? Hey, Sergeant. We 
we going to be in this town long enough to get out for a stretch? Search me. This is what I like about the infantrymen. You always know just what's going on. Well, how do you like this guy? He don't like it in the infantry. He must be off his nuts. He never had it so good. Yeah, he found a home in the army. I'd like to keep her in chocolate for about a week. What's she saying, Jarvis? What's she saying? She wants to know if we'd like to come inside and warm up. Yes, warm up, please. Oh, brother. making a run right down Main Street. No bombs, no strapping, just leaflets. A flurry of leaflets, and then it was gone. The ink was fresh, and the printing was in English. Get a load of this, will you? Welcome to the 101st Airborne Division. I like these secret moves. Yeah, we sure slipped one over in the Jerry's, huh? How do they find out these things? Who tells them? I keep them posted. Short way. Yeah, well, somebody does. Well, you see, they occupied France for four years. Naturally, when they left, they left a few spies behind. Yeah, hey, that's an idea. Why don't us GIs hire some spies so we'll know what's going on once in a while? Get him inside, Sergeant. On the double. All right, third platoon. That corner house there. Looks like a good house, Fox. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah, for once we get a break, Rodriguez. Yeah. It wasn't Paris, but it could have been worse. A nice, warm house with a beautiful girl waiting to serve us hot coffee. I jotted down the name of the town so I'd be sure to remember it. Bastogne. Bastogne, huh? I won't be forgetting this place in a hurry. I wouldn't mind holding up here until Christmas. I hear that's just what we're going to do. All the rumors are good ones. Come on, Mama. Let's you and me take a little walk. What's that, Mama? C'est l'enfant d'un village voisin qui a été bombardé. Un grand bombardement, absolument terrible. Une chose épouvantable qui est arrivée. What's he saying, Jarvis? That she isn't the mother. The kids from a town near here, bombed out. Both parents killed. Ah, oh, they all got a sob story. Let's cut a rug, huh, Denise? Don say? First, you gotta fork over another chocolate bar. What you say, please? Uh, I said, uh, do you think the rain will hurt the rhubarb? Please, you tell me what he says. He, um, uh, he wants to know if we could have a little coffee. Oh, we, oui. the café, or plenty of café, to see. Mm, too sweet. Anything you want, sure. As long as you pay for it. They're all alike over here. Yes, they're all alike, Kip. Scared, they're hungry, and they're lonely. Oh, stop beating your gums, will you? Let a man sleep. It's about that time. We sure come a fur piece today. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. So tired, soldiers. They are so tired. You want the cafe? No, no, I guess not. I go now? I guess so. I'm all beat up. All beat up? You know, it never fails. Every time you meet a pretty babe, you're either out on your feet or you get the order to move. What you say, please? Oh, nothing, nothing. Thank you for the chocolat. That's oh, all right. Hey, where are you going, Jarvis? Guard. Oh. On we, mademoiselle. Je vais aller casser le chocolat pour Charlotte, pour Noël. What'd she say? What'd she say? She said she's going to hide the chocolate from the kid for Christmas. Oh, brother, I wish I knew for sure we'd be here tomorrow. We'll be here, Holly. Are you sure, Kenny? All we do is lie around here till the fog lifts so the Air Corps can come up and win the war for us. Oh, well, in that case, I guess I'll take a chance. I'll see you in the morning, Denise. This may go down in history as the greatest gamble of the war. Good night, Denise. Good night, soldier. Hey, Kenny, are you I, I, absolutely sure? Yeah, the CO told us so himself. Wake me up early, Denise, huh? <laughs> It was dark and cold on the street as I went out to relieve Leighton. Leighton stood in the middle of the street. He had heard someone approaching through the thick, wet fog. Halt! Password! Hamburgers. Onions. I thought the 101st was the only division here. They will be. 
soon as the rest of us can get out. What's that? We rolled a little to the east. Been there for weeks without firing a shot. Then they started coming. Tanks, planes, everything you ever heard of. But they told us it was just a weak little counterattack. Yeah. And they'll probably tell you that this is just a strategic withdrawal. But take it easy, up now. Bright and early the next morning, Holly went out on a patrol, an egg patrol, in Denise's backyard. His mission was accomplished. Seven beautiful white eggs, carefully concealed in a towel. Good morning, soldier. You're looking for something? No, just getting a breath of fresh air. I didn't know you were up. I'll be right back. Hey, Jarvis, keep an eye on these eggs, will you? All right, Holly, get your pack on. What? Me and General McCall have decided to move I Company up on the line. That is, if you agree. Oh, I should have known better. <laughs> Maybe she'll give you a refund on those chocolate bars. Kinney, how much time have I got? Ten minutes? Five minutes? Anything you got to do, you better do in 30 seconds. Oh, no. All right, you guys, saddle up. Come on, saddle up. It wouldn't be a long march, Kenny said, only three or four miles. The morning was gray with the fog, but on either side of the road, we could see the land rolling into little hills covered with a thick wood. It was beautiful country, beautiful. We never saw anybody hit the ground faster than we did, all except Holly. He had to take it easy so he wouldn't break those precious eggs. Don't put hold on your feet. We got that patch of woods to clear. Let's go! We entered the woods. This was the beginning. In a moment, we'll have the second act of Battleground. You know, with our servicemen stationed in so many countries around the world, they have a wonderful opportunity to observe the customs and traditions of other people. And they're finding out that, well, these customs aren't so strange after all. For instance, in many countries, the 1st of May, May Day, is quite important. In Japan, the children build immense paper kites in the shape of a carp, a fish that represents the abundance of food from the sea. They parade these kites through the streets on this day. Halfway around the world, in Austria and other parts of Central Europe, a king and a queen are chosen to reign over the festivities of May Day, complete with music and dancing. In English communities, a maypole is erected, the children attach long streamers to it as they dance around the circle. Well, as our servicemen have observed, we've adopted this to our own culture. Many New England communities still retain the custom of the maypole, complete with the king or queen of the May. We also use May Day as an international signal of distress. This is true about other customs and traditions of all countries. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. And our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing these customs, by learning about them, and honoring them. This, after all, is one of our traditions, to let the other fellow have the same rights and privileges that we want for ourselves. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Battleground, starring Van Johnson as Holly and George Murphy as Jarvis. <laughs> started into the wood, slowly because of the fog, slowly because we were scared. But the woods were clear, at least this section, so we dug in, foxholes in the frozen ground. Hey, Holly, put some more wood on that fire, will you? And burn these eggs? It takes a slow, steady flame when you cook an eggs in a helmet. Okay, let's go. Roll your packs. We're moving. Oh, no. It wasn't my idea. We got to dig in in another area about a mile from here. Tell me something, Pop. Yeah? That time when you were in that camp in New York, did you ever phone your wife? Sure, I'd be sure. Uh, what'd it cost? A nickel. What'd you think? Oh, yeah, that's right. She came there to see you. Well, did you phone your kids long distance? Yeah, just before we shipped out. Why? Uh, what did that cost? Oh, a couple of bucks for three minutes. Why, Johnny? Well, I was thinking it... Probably as far from New York to Wichita, where your kids were, as it is from Wichita to Los Angeles. 
where my folks are. And, and when you get back home, what would that be, Pop? Uh, 200 francs. I'll send you a bill, Johnny. Tell him that I... Ah, oh, you think it's something. And if it runs over three minutes, that's okay. Yeah, sure. Don't worry, I'll phone for you. I know a boarding house far, far away Where they serve ham and eggs three times a day Oh, how the boarders yell when they hear that dinner bell Oh, Put how the... that fire, Holly, it's getting dark Oh, well, I don't really like eggs for supper They'll taste a lot better tomorrow morning for breakfast. Drop them out of your helmet and put it on your head. You got the next shift on the roadblock with Jarvis and that new man. Uh, they said to watch out for Jerry's, wearing GI uniforms. But what about the password? That might be nice to know in case somebody thinks we're Jerry's. Oh, it's, uh, bug jitter. Okay. Hey, Pop, I'm pouring my eggs into that canteen cup. Watch it for me, will you? Okay, okay, you'll get half of them. Thanks. Chum. With darkness, we took over the guard at the roadblock. At the roadblock, Holly and I crawled into a ditch. The fog was worse now. We could barely see Leighton, but we could hear him stamping his feet on the frozen ground. And then we heard other footsteps coming down the road. Oh, password. Bug. Jetter. What is this, Charlie Company? Uh, no, sir. I don't. I Company? And this must be the road to New Chateau. I think it is, sir. Well, uh, the bridge up ahead? Yes, sir. About half a mile up. Good. Let's go, man. We got a good look at him from the ditch. The lieutenant and about a dozen men. Smart cookie, that lieutenant. Wearing his bars on a patrol. Must be a new replacement. Yeah. I should ask if they were from K Company. I got a buddy in K Company. A fellow named Hooper. Sure hope I run into him. <laughs> It wasn't bad enough, the fog and the cold. The next morning, something new was added. Snow. Look, Pop, it's snowing. I never saw snow up close before. It's beautiful. You didn't hear by any chance that it's kind of cold and a bit on the wet side, did you? Of course, you can see snow from Los Angeles, way off in the mountains. Yeah, well, close the window, Johnny, and fix that hole in the roof, huh? Rodriguez, where'd you get the branches for your foxhole? Where do you usually get branches laden? Oh, I didn't know those woods had been cleared. Yeah, sure. K Company moved in a while ago. K Company? I got a buddy in K Company. I was in the woods cutting some branches to build a roof for my own foxhole when Leighton went rushing past towards one of the men in K Company. Hey, Mac, where'll I find Hooper? Hooper? Never heard of him. I know he's in K Company. William J. Hooper. Yeah, nobody by that name with us. Yeah, there is. He came in with a new replacement just the other day. Oh, that was his name, huh? Hey, Sergeant. What's up? That kid that got it last night. His name is Hooper. What do you mean, got it? Direct hit on his box a morning. You don't hear him coming, you don't know what hit you. You didn't even know his name. We didn't even find his dog tag. The snow kept falling, but we did get one break. The mail was still getting through to us. Jarvis? Yeah. Holly? Yeah. Layton? Yeah. Stanford? You? And Wallowitz? You? No, that's all. Uh, nothing for me, huh, Kenny? I'm uh, sorry, Pop. It'll probably come up in the next batch. You act as if I wanted a discharge. Man, I like it here. <laughs> hey, Kenny, what about that patrol? Don't you think I'd better take it out? I can't let you go, Wallowitz. I want to be sure you'll be around to take over if I have to go back. Go back? Yeah, it's my feet. They froze up pretty bad last night. All right. I want three volunteers to go out on patrol. You, you, and you. You'll be in charge, Holly. Why am I always volunteering for patrols? Just a cowboy. G2 says that Jerry's dropped some paratroops last night. You know that farmhouse we passed yesterday? Well, they think they're hiding in the woods this side of it. G2. It's wonderful how they always know what's cooking. Yeah, well, I can tell you something they do know. Last night, some Jerry's and G.I. uniforms infiltrated right through this area. They blew up a bridge on the road to Nuke Chateau. Was one of them wearing lieutenant bars? How did you know, Layton? Oh, we get all the latest rumors. <laughs> Rumor my eye. They captured one of them. Spoke English perfect. Knew our password, plan of deployment, everything. 
That's incoming mail. All right, head it. Head out! Hey, Holly, where'd you leave your egg? They're cooking over there on the fire. Oh, you mean for that shell? on the patrol, Holly, Rodriguez, and I. We found the farmhouse, what was left of it, and we looked around for a little while before entering the woods. This is what G2 calls a patch of woods. A whole division could be hiding in there. Nice job for a three-man patrol, huh? Yeah, if we don't get back, that's how they'll know we ran into some juries. Get behind those trees. It's cheap. Looks like G.I.'s from here, three of them. We better make sure. You guys cover me. Right. Oh! What's the password? I said, what's the password? Passes. Keep them covered, Corporal. They may be German. Any line on these woods, Major? I didn't hear the counter sign. Oh, Liga. Texas Liga. Was road take at the 3rd Battalion headquarters? Straight ahead. Get going, Corporal. Uh, uh, just a minute. What is a Texas Liga, Major? How's that? I said, what's a Texas Liga? Well, it's some kind of baseball term. What kind? A safe hit just over the head of the infield. Nobody asked you. How the Dodgers make out this year? Hey, who's your commanding officer, soldier? Oh, whoever he is, he knows how the Dodgers made out. Let's see your dog tags. What? Come on, come on. We're not taking any chances. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Hey, what is this? Was ist dein Name? What kind of nonsense? Schnell, schnell, Name, Sprechen Sie. Hey, just a minute, you. Who's Betty Grable going with? Cesar Romero. Not you, him. Who's the dragon lady? She's in Terry and the Pirates. What's a hot rod? It's a hopped-up jalopy. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I just got back from a vaudeville. <laughs> I guess they're okay, Joe. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sergeant. A PFC, Major. Praying for civilians. That's why I believe in being careful. And may I suggest, sir, that you study up on baseball? Yeah, I guess I'd better. And by the way, you might tell your buddy that Cesar Romero is out. She's married to Harry James. Let's go, Corporal. We moved on into the woods, maybe half a mile or so, and the further we went, the less we liked it. Yeah, they should have sent out a bigger patrol. Well, if you want to goof off... Who said anything about goofing off? Nobody, nobody. I'm just saying, the best way is to tell them you you heard voices talking in German. Let's say we heard voices talking in Japanese and let G2 figure that out. Well, I'm going to sit down and read my morning mail. That paper any good? Best in the world... The Sedalia News. Hey, get a load of this. Our Changing Times by Mrs. Donald Jarvis. Pinch hitting for your favorite columnist and her favorite husband, now on active duty U.S. Army. Well, you knew I worked on a newspaper. Yeah, but a column takes stuff. Oh, it had its points. I used to get those wire releases and know that I was the first person in town who had the news. I'll guarantee you that my wife knows what's going on in Bastogne. All I know is what's happening to the second squad and the third platoon of I Company. Hey, hey, what's that? Sound off, pal. Password. Texas. Liga. Hiya, fellas. Hi. What's the situation, Lieutenant? Uh, nothing but pine trees in these woods. We've been all through them. Well, I guess our mission's accomplished then. Courtesy of Al Company. You can tell them they can stop worrying about this area. Thanks. Well, guys, I guess we might as well party, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jarvis, did you see what I saw? Yeah. That guy with the bars is the one who brought the patrol through our roadblock last night. Those Germans in GI uniforms Kenny was talking about. There's too many of them for us. Let's get out of here on the double. Come on. Rodriguez got two of them with a hand grenade, but they were coming at us from too many directions. We fought our way back to the ruins of the farmhouse. Behind the stone foundations, maybe we'd have a chance. But just before we reached the... I saw Rodriguez spin and fall. In front of us, out of sight of the Germans, was the snow-covered wreckage of a jeep. We grabbed Rodriguez and we dragged him in behind us. Stay low, Rodriguez. Stay gone. There's some tanks 
coming. Jerry, thanks over there. Go ahead. <laughs> Never find me here. We left him there in the snow under the jeep. There wasn't anything else we could do. We reached our foxholes and reported to Kinney. Kinney with his frozen feet wrapped in strips of blanket. He called in the lieutenant. Enemy tank. We saw them, lieutenant, coming straight at us. Kinney, think we've got enough anti-tank grenades to do any good? We ain't got any, sir. Uh, you mind if I make a suggestion, lieutenant? Uh, well, our usual defense against tanks is to call for artillery and then run like a jackrabbit. Our orders are to hold these positions. All right, sir. Well, let's call for artillery and keep our heads down. Well, we could send out some bazooka men if we had any bazookas. Put in a call for artillery. Yes, sir. Oh, that's great. Artillery with Rodriguez lying out there under that jeep. Well, we'll uh, send out a patrol for him as soon as a barrage lifts. With what? A sponge? When the barrage was over, Holly and I went back to the farmhouse. Pop Stazak was with us. Pop was going crazy. Hurry up, will you? How long do you think a guy can last in this cold? Come on, hurry up! That's it, Pop. That's the Jeep. Johnny. Johnny. Under the snow was a hand. The palm upturned. The fingers stretched, reaching. The way a man who had never seen it before might raise his hand to catch the falling snow. Sea snow. Way off in the mountains. They say it's just like going to sleep. He was a religious kid. When anybody got hit, he used to he used to say it was God's will. We covered him with a blanket and left him there. That afternoon, Leighton found a copy of the Stars and Stripes. It was three days old, but it was the first news we'd had since we hit Bastogne. Strategic withdrawal and bulge, it says. What's the bulge? Beats me. Hitler's mighty counteroffensive swept on yesterday, plunging 20 miles into Belgium. Hey, that's where we are, ain't we, Belgium? I thought it was Luxembourg. Let me see that paper. War Department reports that morale is high all along the fog-bound front. Battle-hardened doughboys fresh from epic making trying... Get the commercials, Jarvis. Hey, look at that. At Bastogne, the 101st Airborne... Hey, that's us! Men, you will be proud to know that you are making an heroic stand, hurling back the best that von Rundstedt can throw at you. Who's von Rundstedt? A Nazi general, the best they got. Pop, is the 101st the only division up here? It don't say, Leighton. We'll have to wait for the next edition. Only you won't be here to read it, Pop. Huh? Here, here's a letter for you. It looks official. Thanks, Kinney. You ought to get back to the aid station, Kenny, before those feet get any worse. Yeah, no, they won't take frozen feet unless they started to change color. Besides, all they got left at the aid station is aspirin and iodine. What about the field hospital? Captured. Medics, casualties, or works. Hey, wait for me, Kenny. I'm a civilian. It's official. Signed, sealed, and delivered. All right, Pop. You ain't going no place. Oh, I ain't? All right, Chip, read this letter yourself. I don't care what it says. Nobody's leaving fast down. The headquarters patrol just went by when we were out on the roadblock, and I got it straight from them. We're surrounded. Surrounded? If this is one of your crummy jokes, Chip, I'll knock them G.I. teeth right down your throat. Take it easy, Pop. Take it easy. It's straight, Pop. I was on the roadblock with Chip. I didn't have the heart to tell you. That's incoming mail. Hit it. You know, I can get them in a lot of trouble for this. It's against the rules of war to shoot a civilian. Hey, look. Look at that. What? There's a shadow over there. Ah, it's just some burnt out powder. You desirable old age before you see a shadow around here. This fog ain't never gonna lift. Did the plane have to wait? Didn't they never hear a flying blind? Nobody cares. They just don't care. I don't believe that. Mm, Reverend Lake will now lead us in prayer. Might not be a bad idea. They only passed down some information. If a man gets hit, he at least has the right to know what country he's died in. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for dang sure. Abner, I've asked you 800 times. Honest, I won't say it no more. 
That's for sure. We were digging in at the railroad embankment. The coal was never more penetrating than the fog thicker. We could barely see our own men in their foxholes. But we knew that the Nazis were coming closer and closer. We were so close now that we could hear their orders. We fire a burst at where the voices came from and dropped to the ground again. Only some who dropped never moved anymore. Abner was one of them. Sandiford another. Hanson was badly wounded. I saw Holly jump from his foxhole and start running. I couldn't figure it out. And then Leighton, after him. Holly! Holly, I'm with you, Holly! Come on, then, take off! In a moment, Act Three of Battleground. You know, the world is in pretty good shape when people try to outdo each other in doing things for others. (laughs) If that sounds a little confused, uh, let me tell you what I mean. In Tokyo, two of the commanding general's honor guard platoons each adopted an orphanage. They sent work parties to repair roofs, walls, ceilings, windows, and floors to fix the plumbing and renew kitchen and heating facilities. Intense rivalry developed between the units as to which could do the most. Each platoon solicited money at its pay tables. They bought bolts of cloth and had warm clothes made for their protégés. It's the kind of game, the kind of a rivalry that we like to hear about, because it's one in which everybody wins. And such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Battleground, starring Van Johnson as Holly and George Murphy as Jarvis. <laughs> Holly and Layton had run to a ridge, a small, snow covered hill. Then Kinney jumped to his feet and waved us out of our foxhole. Take a squad, follow me, we're going after them! <laughs> Eight of us made it to the hill. The Germans hadn't seen us. And then we waited. And they came into sight. Maybe 40 of them, all told, creeping toward the railroad embankment. And then Kenny gave us the word. It was one of the hottest skirmishes we're ever in. Leighton had had his baptism of fire. He was a veteran now, like the rest of us. I thought Holly was running away, Jarvis. That's why I ran after him. How do you know what Holly was thinking? How do you know if he was thinking at all? Things just happen, and then afterwards you try to figure out why you acted the way you did. I know why I ran. I was scared to death. You just joined the biggest club in the Army, Leighton. Everybody belongs. Later on that day, we had more visitors. But this time, they came with a flag of truce. Two Nazi officers and two enlisted men. I thought they had us around it. Oh, what's Wallensy? I speak English. Who is here in command? I am here in command. We have a message for the commanding general. I'll get a jeep and take the officers back, Jarvis. You keep the other two here. Okay. Maybe you can get something out of them. I threw all the German I knew at these two Nazis, but all I could get out of them was their name and rank. Give right up, that old Jochman. Ah, oh, come on, loosen up. Give us a lowdown. You can talk now. Hitler's kaput. How'd you guys like some nice K rations? Chocolat, yeah. Chocolat? You know, there ain't a chocolate cigarette and ready. He says he'll talk for a pack of cigarettes. Okay. Talk. We're stelling in an ultimatum. Entweder Übergabe or a tot. What's he say? They want us to surrender. Surrender or be killed, he said. Us? Well, tell him to take a flying leap at a rolling donut. That's all we learned until Holly came back with the officers. With them was a colonel from our headquarters. The Nazi captain seemed a little upset. The Major thinks General McAuliffe must have misunderstood. 
we have appealed to the well-known American humanity to save the people of Bastogne from further suffering, we have given you two hours to consider before raining destruction upon you. We do not understand General McAuliffe's answer. Well, I'll be glad to repeat it. The answer is nuts. Uh, no, sir. No? There's a negative or a positive in there? Is that a negative or an affirmative reply? Nuts is strictly negative. A negative. Tja. So then, viele Amerikaner dran glauben müssen. We will kill many Americans. On your way, bud. Well, I feel better. For once, we know what's going on around here. For once, we get the story before my wife writes it up in the Sedalia News. They weren't kidding. They poured it on us. Everything they had from every direction. And we drew back still further. No reinforcements, no help of any sort. It looked as if Kip had something when he said, nobody cares. They just don't care. The cold is getting me. You'd think they'd let us stop long enough to build a fire. Don't tell me your problems, Leighton. Tell the chaplain. Oh, yeah. The chaplain, I forgot. We've got nothing to worry about. Holy Joe's going to pray for us. The Christmas service. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. If the fog lift, they shall run and not be weary, unless they have frozen feet. And they shall walk and not faint. If they don't lose too much blood before the medics come up. Hit it. Hit the ground. It was another airmail message from Hitler. Propaganda leaflet. This time delivered in a shell, which exploded nearby. Holly picked up one of the leaflets. Hey, listen to this. Merry Christmas, soldier, and our deepest sympathy. It's tough being away from home at this time of year, especially when you're surrounded and outnumbered ten to one. Don't you feel your loved ones worrying about you, praying for you? Yes, old boy, praying and hoping you'll come home again. Man, have you thought about it? What if you don't come back? Just remember this. Where there's a will, there's a way. Hot chow and safety are waiting for you only 300 yards away. They don't miss a trick, them Jerry's. <laughs> Hot chow and safety. Well, all right, come on. On your feet. Come on, let's go. The Christmas services were just a little bit different from any we'd ever attended before. Maybe 30 of us gathered in a clearing. The chaplain was just as cold, just as dirty, just as tired as the rest of us. And he talked our language. At ease, men, at ease. Let's get this show on the road. Well, anybody here from Ohio? Buckeye Lake, sir. No? Cincinnati, sir. I'm from Chillicothe. Any of you men losing? Here, sir. My wife is, sir. Mm -hmm, so am I. But these services aren't just for Lutherans any more than just for men from Ohio. Now, I really happen to be in your area. In other areas, there are other chaplains of various denominations and religions. You know what? Uh, all of us holy Joes are switch hitters. Earlier this month in Holland, I held Hanukkah services for some of the men of the Jewish faith. How'd that do, Albert? Not bad for a beginner, <laughs> sir. <laughs> well, men... Nearly Christmas. Here we are in beautiful Beth Stone, enjoying the winter sport. And the $64 question is, was this trip necessary? I'd like to try to answer that if I can. Yeah, but my sermons, like everything else in the Army, depend on the situation and the terrain. I can assure you this is going to be a quickie. Was this trip necessary? Now, boys, let's look at the facts. You know, nobody wanted this war but the Nazis. A great many people tried to deal with them. A lot of them are dead. Millions have died for no other reason except that the Nazis wanted them dead. So in the final showdown, there was nothing left to do except fight. A great lesson in this. Those of us who learned it the hard way aren't going to forget it. We must never let any force dedicated to a super race or a super idea or super anything.
become strong enough to impose itself on a free world. We must be smart enough and tough enough in the beginning to put out the fire before it spreads. So, boys, my answer to the $64 question is yes. Yeah. This trip was necessary. As the years go by, a lot of people are going to forget it. A few men won't. And boys, don't ever let anybody tell you that you were a sucker to fight in the war against fashion. Now, Jerry permitting, let us pray. Let us pray for this fall to lift. Almighty God. Well, boys, the organist is hitting those bass notes a little too loud for me to be heard, so let each of us pray in his own way to his own God. Not until morning did we know how bad it really was. It was then that the cooks, the headquarters clerks, the typists, even the walking wounded who'd been brought to Bastogne came back on the line. Every man who could still fire a rifle. No more little feelers to find out where the enemy was. Everyone knew where they were. They were all around us. Holly got out his bayonet and he fixed it to his right. We just looked at him and slowly, one by one, we followed suit. I was watching Kinney. Suddenly, he dropped his rifle. He just stood there staring down at the snow, at a shadow of himself on the snow. Hey, hey, it's shining. It's shining. The fog's lifting. It's shining. Here they come. Fighter plane. Bomber two. I'm out of there. Here comes the C-47. Look at him drop those supplies. Fighter planes, bombers, C 47s, dropping rations, ammunition, medical supplies, just what we wanted for Christmas. In the wake of the planes came the replacements new men, fresh men. Men with clean uniforms and strange, clean faces. We sat on the road watching them come in. And then, the most beautiful sight of all, Hank. Hey, Daddy, what are them things? Oh, that's a new kind of warfare, son. Mechanized, I think they call it. Right about the stars and stripes. Well, what'll they think of next? Hey, thank God, sugar up a papa. We, we. Got a stars and stripes two days old. Hey, it's been pretty rugged up here. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for dang sure. Hey, handsome. Yeah, good luck, boys. Well, according to the stars and stripes, the folks back home knew we'd get out of this. They heard relief was breaking through two days ago. Fine, I'd hate to think they've been worrying about it. You'll be happy to know that we're in Belgium, not Luxembourg. Oh, just so we're going back, that's all that counts. You mean you're not happy in the service, Paul? Oh, I didn't say that. I love it. You found a home in the army, chum. Me too. Never had it so good in my life. All right, third platoon, on your feet. Come on, all in, you guys. Oh, no! You mean we're going back on the line? Come on, boys. That's it. All right, platoon. Aboard! Hey! Now you're talking! Forward! Ah! It must have been quite a sight as we headed back to Bastogne. Kinney limping along in front of us. He could hardly walk, but he didn't like the way some of those new replacements were staring at us. All right, all right, come on, come on. What do you want those guys to think we are, a bunch of wax? All right, now, pick it up! Up! Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Kip. Put those teeth back in your face. Bring up those rivals. Hut, ho, hurry, ha. Hut, ho, hurry, ha. You had a good home, but you left. You're right. You had a good home, but you left. You're right. Jody was there when you left. You're right. Your baby was there when you left. You're right. Gone off. One, two. Gone off. Three, four. Came strong. One, two, three, four. Baby was lonely as lonely could be. company. Ain't it great to have a pal? Work so hard to find a morale. Count on. One, two. Count on. Three, four. Ten, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. You ain't got nothing to worry about. It's easy to hang your idea. And you won't get up. 
to the end of the war. In 's will return. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind as many another American has. Perhaps one of our greatest ambassadors was the humorist Artemis Ward, who did a great deal to cement the friendship between America and England. In 1866, Artemis Ward arrived in London for a series of lecture tours, although he wasn't in the best of health. After his first lecture, an English newspaper wrote, there is certainly this foundation for a cordial understanding between the two countries calling themselves Anglo-Saxon, that the Englishman, puzzled by Yankee politics, thoroughly relishes Yankee jokes. When two persons laugh together, they cannot hate each other much, so long as the laughter continues. As Artemis Ward continued his tour, in his own humorous way, he criticized both England and America, and the cordial understanding grew between the two countries. Although his health grew worse... Artemis Ward refused to abandon his tour, and he didn't stop until he collapsed in the middle of a lecture. Within a few days, he was dead, at the age of 33. In announcing his death, the London Observer said, Artemis Ward never used his great powers of humor for that biting purpose which is implied in the word sarcasm. He's been a man not only of humor, but of good humor. There is no man among us who does not feel that he is the better for having known him. Since his landing in this country, he was taken by the hand in a feeling of brotherhood between our two countries. So it was that Artemis Ward proved to all America that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, Ben Johnson and George Murphy. <laughs> I'll tell you about next week's play. It's an exciting Paramount picture. A drama of an American adventure out to steal a sunburst of the ancient tribe of Peruvian Indians. Secret of the Incas. And as our stars of this strange treasure hunt, filled with intrigue and romance, will be the original stars, Charles Heston and Nicole More. We won't miss that one either, Irving. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Radio Theater is produced by Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. <laughs>